when someone is sitting shiva, someone wants to love one, the shame should protect us. What are you doing at a shiva club? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're not telling them anything. What are you going to say to them? All is for the best. <coughs> you know what a shiva call is? A shiva call is sit there and you cry with them. The function of a shiva call is that person should know they're not alone in the world. You know how you say someone in the morning is called an avel. Avelut is mourning. It comes, the first says the word afel. And aval, avel, is a base and pay. Any speech therapists here? A base and a pay are lip letters. Usually the first sounds that human beings make are lips. That's to say mother, father, madre, padre, ima, ahba, okay? These are the first words that usually involve a lip, lip sound. Afel, you go. Cut off. Person is cut off. The word aval in Hebrew means but. Aval, but. These are wonderful, terrific, great. Aval, but. <laughs> Things are horrible, miserable, terrible. Aval, but. So the but is a cutting word. A person who's an avelut, someone who's sitting shiva, feels cut off. They feel alone. A shiva call, the function of a shiva call, is to be there to show that person you're not alone. That's the function of a shiva call. How about visiting the sick? You know, you know, you know, you know a sick person is sitting shiva over his health. What do you do? You come and be with them. If you're a doctor, try and be of help. If they need some tea, give them some tea. Yeah? But the main purpose of a, of, a, of, a, of a call to someone who's sick is to show them to somebody who notices they're not in the street anymore, they're not at work anymore. I notice, I miss you. There was a Jew named Ramosha Schwab. He was the Mashkirch in the Gates Head Yeshiva. <coughs> he said he came to visit a, a Jew in the London hospital. He sat with him for a half hour, didn't say a word, and then got up and left. The person said it was his best visit. <laughs> <laughs> I just know someone's here. Someone cares about me. Someone <coughs> notices me. Someone realizes that I'm not here. The worst human emotion is the feeling of being cut off of being alone, of feeling alone. We need a friend. This is the pain of not being married. The pain of not having a good marriage. <clears throat> a person feels alone. A person feels cut off. It's a hard feeling. <coughs> Human beings need we mentioned before that a being has an individual part and a community part to their soul. <clears throat> they have a community part to their Now I told you that I, that I, uh, I, I, you know, I like, I didn't tell you, I, I like airplanes, I don't like airports, but I like airplanes. I was in, um, airports are terrible places, you're not anywhere. You're neither here nor there. I was once sitting in Toronto. Personal thing. I was sitting in Toronto. <clears throat> you know, in order for a, a, a flight to happen, you have to have a deal between two airports. Because Sir Isaac Newton, he's, like, he's always right. Right? Sir Isaac Newton's the only guy who knows always right. So Sir Isaac Newton says, you know, paraphrase, that which goes up must come down. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, in the air flights, that's the same thing also. What goes up needs to come down. So you need two airports to make a deal. It's usually down south that breaks the deal. Toronto doesn't usually break the deal when it comes to weather. And it was snowing in Detroit. Now Detroit's also a place that they don't close down. They don't, don't go into a panic when it's snow. 
Okay, over here I assume there was some snow, so the whole place would probably just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, it snows here? No, it snows here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, what happens when it snows? It's close here. close here. We don't have a close here. Two years and only one time. It was a snow day and it was sunny and it was so funny. It was like this. One time. So anyway, I want you to ask a question about snow. It's in Hebrew, it's shelik, which is 333. Shin is 300, Lamed is 30, Kim was 3. Like, why? <laughs> okay, anybody have an answer? So please, why 333? So anyway, it was a long wait. And I felt lonely. So I called up Israel. Bezik beinu umi shalom. Koma beinu tfusot, ana hamten, v'tanu l'fiato. I knew my wife wasn't home. I just wanted to hear the language. I just wanted to hear the Hebrew, that's all. That's all I want is to hear the Hebrew. I felt cut off. A friend, when you have a friend and you know something, you make maybe one or two in your life. Like I don't, you know. People say, oh, we're so close. They're not so close. <laughs> You go to a different city, or you change your job, or you know you have a little bit of a falling out, and you're not close anymore. Right. Okay, <clears throat> a real friend is a treasure. Now there are three loves. This is very, very important and very basic. This is a different kind of talk than the previous one, but still, it still it makes sense. <clears throat> In many of the commentaries, it talks about there are three reasons I would love someone. The Vilna Gaon in one place gives a fourth reason. One reason I love someone is because they're good. Close, they're good. They're tzaddikim, they're tzitkaniyot, they're righteous. I love them because of who they are. Another love is, I love you because you're sweet, you're fun, you make me happy. You're great to be around. Another love is, you help me, you give me advice. You uh, fix my things. You help me out. You give me a lift. You, you, you help me. You do things for me. There's a fourth love. is I love someone who I feel loves me. That's the love of the child. A young child learns to love through the experience of being loved. <clears throat> this is not our subject. But this is the easiest. It doesn't require to do anything. If you feel loved by Hashem, then you can love him back. But there's a rub over here. There's a catch. You have to feel that you're deserving of being loved. Because if you think you're no good, God knows you're no good, he doesn't love you. Well, I don't love him back. So the bottom rung of loving God is feeling and believing that I am worth being loved. As we said last talk, one of the principles, one of the Values I think you have to give over to a child is that the point. Okay. So the most stable love is I love someone because they're good. They stay who they are. The other loves are relative. I want something out of you. I want fun out of you. You taste good. Yeah? Or, I, I need your advice. Today, Absalom Brevda, a very great Jew, said, we love our great rabbis because we want advice from them, we want a, a blessing out of them, we want something out of them. We don't just love them because they're good. That's why he said we have a hard time hating Amalek. Because what did Amalek ever do to me? It's more self-centered love. And that's already less stable. Because what if you can't give me advice anymore? Or what if your jokes fall flat? Now, the Vilna Goyen actually talks, says, translates this into food. There's food that I eat because it's a mitzvah. Yeah. It might not agree with me, but digestive tract. Yes? Pesach is coming. A lot of matzah, quickly, 
on an empty stomach, ask any gastroenterologist <laughs> whether it is a good idea. <laughs> Plus, you know, a couple of cups of wine on an empty stomach. And if you're female, a tired empty stomach. Okay? <laughs> okay? Well, it's a mix Then there's another kind of food that you eat because it tastes good. I look at certain foods and I say, I like it! It doesn't like me. It doesn't like me, so I like it. It's not... Except Shabbat, I like it, even though it doesn't like me. <laughs> yeah? And the third kind of food is healthy food that goes about it. It's the same three things. So we have to know friendship and relationships can be built on one of these three pillars. Either I, we're friends because I love you because of who you are, or I love you because you do things for me, or I love you because you make me happy. Probably the most important friendships, friendship in life, is marriage. Is marriage. I love you because you do things for me. I'm going to tell you something. In 30 years, only one boy, only one male, ever asked me, what do I have to offer? What does she need? Am I ready to get married? Everybody else wants to know, what do I need? That's the standard question. What do I need? What do you, what you need? What about her? A guy came back from a date once. He said to me, it was an Israeli yeshiva. He says to me, she's a great girl. I don't like her, I'm not, you know, I don't like her hair color that much. I'm not going to go out with her again. So I said to him in Hebrew, What sin did this girl commit that she should marry you? I couldn't say it to an American because he never talked to me again. Yeah. What did she do? What did she, you know, why should she? You know, I tell boys she's trusting you with her life, and you're not trusting her with yours. We're not going to go into that. It's not a talk on marriage. Yeah? But what do I need? I, what do I have to offer? What do I have to offer? The basis of friendship is what I have to offer you, what I have to give to you. How can I help you? <clears throat> Hopefully, it's reciprocal. But it's not even. You can't have an even marriage or an even friendship. One is always going to be able to give more than the other. But so? So what? We're, uh, we're counting. We're, we're, we're keeping score. That's not a friendship. So the, the bottom line in the first, the first point on friendship is Am I here for me? Am I here for you? Now, there are friendships where I just give and the other one just takes. We call that a child. There is such a relationship. That's a parent-child relationship where I just give and you just take. Right? But that's not. Friendship has a certain reciprocity to it. It doesn't have to be even. I'm not saying you shouldn't have relationships with people who you just give to and they don't give back. I'm not saying you shouldn't have that. You can. That's wonderful. But it's not a friend. So the first point is you should love someone because they're good. You should love goodness. Now, there are different words in Hebrew that reflect the friendship. Do you, um, yeah. do you have a real friendship even though one of these is non existent? They're really not a good person, but they make me feel great. It's not a stable friendship. It is, I said these are the three reasons why you would love someone. I can love someone who just, he's not a good person, but he makes me feel great. Yeah? So yes, but that defines the friendship. <clears throat> and the question is, how stable is that friendship? And how healthy is it? For instance, let's say you have a couple who are married, they love going around the world and eating. They see for all kinds of cuisine. And then one of them does a terrible thing. He goes, <coughs> goes off and gets diabetes. Or you have a couple that love to play golf. They, they have, they're connoisseurs of golf courses all over the world. 
and then one of them comes down with arthritis. If the marriage is over, if that's all it was, then the marriage is over. You know, uh, uh, Rabbi Glazer, Ellie Glazer, once sent me a, uh, something off of the internet that today the colleges in the United States are offering workshops for freshmen who are the youngest in their families to prepare them for their parents' divorce. What? Because many families will stay together until the youngest one leaves, and then they split. It's common enough. It's common enough that they want to give work. They have workshops. For them. So that was a relationship based on the children. And by the way, these are wonderful people. Call it kavod. The all honor due to them that they stay together for the children. Okay. I'm not saying that you should stay together for children, and I shouldn't. That's not our subject. But they did. They did. So I'm not, there's no, no criticism going on here. But that was their reason. Okay? I know cases where, where husbands or wives have stopped becoming religious. So, who says that's the reason to get divorced? You have to, you have to figure things out. The things you need to figure out, but that not necessarily grounds for divorce. I'm not. I, 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 I'm getting into murky waters over here. Okay, we're talking about friendship, but I'm talking about when things, you know, if if, if we talk about uh, finance or economics, there's a thing called the diversified portfolio. That means I have. The, by the way, the Talmud says that. Talmud says. 30% of your money should be fluid, 30% of your money should be in real estate, and 30% should be in merchandise. That's what the Talmud says. Okay? You should have a diversified portfolio. I remember, I'm old enough to remember, that Brazil was a one-crop country. Coffee. 50 years ago, it was just coffee. When the coffee prices were high, it was great. When not, it was terrible. I mean, they've diversified now. You have a banana republic, not this stuff that you... You know, <laughs> sure. yeah. When the bananas are up, they're up. No, it's not stable. A marriage, a friendship, should be based on many things. Many things that tie us together. And by the way, those things should keep increasing. There is no such thing as a marriage which is stable, which has plateaued. There's constant change. One of the ways you express love to someone is you allow them to change, to become different. To become different. I had a student in seminary whose parents, again, she was, I think, the youngest one. She wanted to become a detective, and she did, only in America. She became a detective. But he wanted her home with his shoes and his, you know, his tea and crumpets, you know? Okay. He wanted just like the old days, but the old days are not here anymore. So I got divorced. You can hear it tilting me by the way. Okay, we'll go into that. Yeah? He wouldn't let her change. He wouldn't let things become different. You love someone, you don't love them because of this. You love someone because of them. <clears throat> you want to become a detective, so great, become a detective. Understand? Mm -hmm. What's the problem? So the love is, should not be contingent on this, because this is almost, almost by definition, unstable. So then whatever you're, at, you're stable is what you're anchored in. Now, there are different words in Hebrew. There are different words in Hebrew that refer to friendship. I'm going to just give two or three or four of them. Yedid. Yedid means yad yad, one hand or the other. We're connected. Chaver, that's the famous, most famous one. Uh, Mr. Clinton, yeah, said Shalom Chaver at Rabin's funeral. Yeah, but Chaver means Mechubar means attached, connected. <coughs> Rea is a shepherd. Here's where they're a little different. The sheep are not supposed to do anything for the shepherd. The shepherd's supposed to do something for the sheep. What this means in friendship is that sometimes I am totally for you, and sometimes you're totally for me. There will be times in life where 
I just take care of you. And now with a child, it never, it's always just for him. But there are, the, it, it, in friendship, there's a quality that I remember of Olga, a very great Jew, a very great thinker, passed away about a decade ago. He was a, a um, unlettered Jew, an unschooled Jew, uh, didn't have any scholarship at all. When this man came into the room, Rav Olga stood up for him. This man got married. A few months after his marriage, his wife became sick. And he took care of her. She was in a wheelchair for 35 years. And he took care of her until she passed away. Yeah. At a few months, when it was, you know, she gave to him. For the next 35 years, he gave to her. He used to stand up for him. This is a giant. There, there are ways to greatness besides scholarship. There are different paths to greatness. We have different DNAs. But I, I'm your shepherd. A shepherd is someone who who watches and takes care. You know, uh, one of my definitions of love, and by the way, you don't know who you're looking at. I inspired a Hollywood movie. Really? That's not, now, now it's important. This movie Shrek. That was because of me. It's, it's in the internet that Rabbi Goldberg taught the definition of love. If it's important to you, it's important to me. And I taught it to Rabbi Goldberg. And it says so on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> At least they showed it to me. Yeah? So, love is important to you, it's important. But I, but I, have, I have another, I, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, when my father was in Bethlehem Hospital, I mentioned in the previous talk, I had a student who was a nurse in the emergency room in Bethlehem Hospital. She was my student when she was 18. She was 31 then. And, uh, I sent a, a note down to her, I said, Leslie, um, I'm upstairs in cardiology. So she came up. She was dating a resident then. And she uh, found, you know, she got me a place in his apartment that I, I could rest uh, when I would have a chance to rest. They released my father on a Friday. Oh, sure. he recovered. And I went down to the, went to the apartment to, uh, to say thank you. Leslie was there. And she was cleaning the chicken. Now, I, that was a long time ago, of course. Who cleans chickens anymore? <laughs> my mother used to salt chickens. That's really prehistoric. Yeah? So anyway, Leslie is a vegetarian. So I said to her, this must feel like you're holding a dead carcass. And she says, that's exactly what it feels like. But my cousin, they got engaged. My husband likes chicken soup. That's love. But I have another definition of love which has to do with shepherd. Uh, but about 10, 12 years ago, I went to Australia. And it was winter weather there in August. And the flight was delayed and delayed and delayed in Melbourne. And uh, I had to make a connecting flight from Los Angeles to go to New Jersey. I will never have a short flight, a long flight after that. 26 hours flying. It's like, you know, it's, it's hard to top that. So anyway, we were delayed because we went to weather. And they said to me, your kosher meal will be transferred to the next flight, which is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> except for El Al, except for El Al, you cannot get a kosher meal on an airplane in less than 24 hours, and some airlines take longer. Okay? And I didn't know we were taking off, so there was no texting. I got in touch with Rabbi Shlomo Goldberg. I said to him, I don't know when I'm arriving in Los Angeles. I don't know what day it will be. Can you track my flight? Robert and Shlomo Goldberg were standing at the gate in Los Angeles with, tra with uh, Qantas had lied to me about which gate I was supposed to go to also, with the correct uh, connection, <coughs> kosher food, and a car taking the train to go in, in LAX airport. They were tracking my flight. Somebody in the world is tracking my flight. Somebody in the world knows where I am and cares about where I am. God tracks our flight. Someone's tracking my flight. When you love someone, you track their flight. Where are you now? Where are you? That's a rayon. That's a shepherd. I don't know where I am. 
but Rabbi Goldberg knows where I am. And that's okay. He is God's representative. Then you have Amit. That's a less known word. Uh, uh, Amit, Amit is also is like a, a colleague. Yeah? Amita. Yeah? It comes from word Am, in. It means with someone. What's it? You know, he's saying nation in Hebrew and Am. Yeah? What's that? Am means with. We're all together. Even in Israel, where we can't get along with each other, we, you know, it's hard. It's a problem. <coughs> All Israelis get along beautifully in foreign airports. In foreign airports. <laughs> 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 it's a of that you know why? You know why? Because we are focusing on what brings us together. Oh, there's so many things that bring us together. And, and uh, I went to San Antonio, Texas. I asked to see the Alamo. <coughs> why? In the Alamo, Colonel Travis, Davy Crockett, and Jim Bowie were not shooting at each other. You know, because well, a lot of Mexicans out there. Well, we can't shoot at each other either in Israel. But in foreign airports, we have chosen to focus on what brings us together. We are one nation. And I just going to mention to you, there was a, an Israeli soldier named Nachshon Waxman. Nachshon Waxman was captured by, by, by terrorists. They held him right near my home. It was uh, near Ramallah. It was, uh, they were holding him. I spoke to I spoke to someone in LA. They say she says to me, they say he's in the, he's in Gaza. He's not in Gaza. Heroes heroes helicopters going over my house. He ain't in Gaza. Yeah. <clears throat> Nachshon Waxman united the Jewish people. Everybody prayed for him. He proved he was killed in the end, but he proved that that Israel can be united. He proved it. We all got together. Therefore, it's going to happen. It'll happen. How? Don't know. But it'll happen. Number three, a world of friendship and no one is alone. Judaism teaches, this is my yedidot menuchatech. How the, the menuch of Shabbat is, is yedidus. It's, 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 it's a world of friendship. It's a, it's a world of friendship. No one is alone. I come off in Heathrow Airport. I was I was asked to speak at a principal's conference in Bournemouth. And that's uh, southern England. Yeah? I'm co foot to England for one day. So I said to him as part of my fee, you should give me a taxi to the airport. Yeah? To Ben Gurion, I meant Ben Gurion Airport. <laughs> yeah. got kind of. Someone is usually willing to drive me, so I sent a, a fax, I think it was a fax, to him saying the airport's taken care of. I come to Heathrow and nobody's there. Yes, I, I went off to someone who has what they call in the Israeli army Zingalach, these long side locks. And um, He's one of my people. I said, can I borrow your mobile? So I call up the rabbi and says, but you said the airport is taken care of. To an Israeli, the airport means Ben-Gurion. To an Englishman, the airport means Heathrow. <laughs> and I was stuck. I was out. I was gone. I had $5. I wanted to change the money. She says to me, you guys going to cost you with $4 to change this? <laughs> <laughs> A woman walks up to me, and she says to me, she didn't have to be a psychologist. You could see that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, she says to me, what's the problem? So I told her. So she said, no problem. She gave me $180 for a minicab to Bournemouth. She gave me rice cakes, a calling card, her address, and gold is green. She didn't know me. Wow. God has a sense of humor. A few months later, I was in London for about a mitzvah. And guess what they sent me up to send me up in her house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a famous story several years ago. I, I did this in service. I did this uh, to you know, if it's principals. One of them was listening in from Chicago. There was some from Houston, from Chicago, from Montreal. These are all New York principals. Now, in the winter, 
I don't go to Chicago. I didn't want to go through Chicago. <laughs> because you know, see, delay, 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 cancel is next to Chicago. <laughs> so yeah, I don't go to Chicago. But and especially not on Friday. I'm an experienced traveler. I don't fly on Friday. I just don't fly on Friday. I just, you know, I, you know, I don't even talk to you about it. I do a Shabbat I come Thursday night. I'm just, uh, I afraid. So anyway, there was a mice. A few years ago, there was a, 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 a flight from the, uh, to Chicago. It was delayed, delayed, delayed. And then O'Hara, O'Hare Airport they had, you know, traffic. It was late. It was Friday. They were diverting the plane to Milwaukee until they could take off again to Chicago. The way she, it was put on the internet was um, the the, uh, the long skirts and the black hats were congregating in the back to figure out what to do about Chavez. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. And the pilot gave them permission to make a call, and they were set up, everyone was set up in Milwaukee, of course, by the Chabad rabbi. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And this woman writes, she sat down next to her seatmate on the airplane and says, I hear you, you're getting off in Milwaukee. Will you be staying? You're staying somewhere tonight? He says, Yeah. Do you know the people? No. She couldn't do you're going to go to a house and stay overnight in a place where you don't even know the people. I'm Yisrael Chai. That's the Jewish people. We take care of each other. I got off a plane in London. The guy says, "Can I?" Have? I thought he said twenty pounds. I, I, I took out twenty pounds. He said, "No, twenty pence." It's a big difference. Twenty pence is like twenty cents. Twenty pounds is more than twenty dollars. I was going to give it to him. He said, no one's alone. No one's alone. And the word achza, cruel. Achza comes from the word ach only za stranger. You can only be cruel to someone who you don't know. My chavusa, his mother, this is a long time ago, he's my chavusa 45 years ago. His mother was accosted by a German soldier and told to turn around because the tradition was you put a bullet to the back of the head. And he, she said to him, no, I want to look at my murderer in the face. He couldn't pull the trigger. When you get to know someone, it's different. Why do people fly around the world and pay business class fears? Why don't you just, you know, talk to each other on the phone? Or even Skype? <clears throat> Not the same. I need to meet you. Once you know someone, uh, Yaakov Feldheim told me, everybody has a story. Everybody has a book. Everyone has a life. It's, it's a book. Yeah? When you get to know someone, you can't be cruel to them. It's just because you don't know them. So, friendship is get to know someone. Get to know where they come from. Get to know who they are. Get to know what their experiences were. Get to know who, like, where they come. people are coming from somewhere. Where are they coming from? Seek to understand. That's the greatest compliment. And the work that needs to be done to acquire a true friend is have to be a giver. Now, the function of a true friend is to tell you off and give you advice. One is that person knows what your strengths are and therefore can give you advice because good advice is based on strengths. What are you good at? Um, Yesterday, um, someone, uh, a parent of a student in my school, the boy doesn't know what he wants to do with himself. So I said, send him for an aptitude test. There's an organization called Johnson O'Connor. They do aptitude tests in New York. Now, these things are not perfect. I sent a female student for an aptitude test, and it came back, she should become a forest ranger. <laughs> It didn't compute, because <coughs> seminary girls don't go into forest rangery. <laughs> okay? So it does have its, you know, imperfections. But this boy's problem is, he has, he has too, big a, too big a sheet of paper. He has to write an essay question. He doesn't know what he wants to do. I can do the whole world. I don't know what to do. But when you narrow it down, and you find out what your aptitude is, what you're good at, then you're talking, you know, there's this book called Mindless Eating. 
Okay, in a very beautiful little book. When they had 10 brands of marmalade, no one bought Four brands you bought. They said Listerine used to have like 14 flavors, and the sales were way down. They now it's down to four flavors, skyrocketed. Because they have so many choices, I don't know what to do. When you have limited choices, so okay, I see this, you know, these are my choices. So, what are you good at? What are you good at? The draft board wants to know what you're good at, not what you're bad at. My kids were at the draft board, and they found that there's a boy that knew how to speak Arabic. An Israeli boy who speaks Arabic fluently is a rarity. It's, it's, it's unusual that they're surrounded and then part of the world that everyone speaks Arabic, and most people don't. Well, the reason is because they hate us. Yeah? Normally, everyone should speak Arabic. But they wanted him. Why? Because they wonder what you're good at now. You know, you, know, you come Rosh Hashanah, and you say, God, I, wanna, I want a new year. First of all, I probably won't be here before Rosh Hashanah. Rav Miller said, before yes for a good year, a new year, thank him for the last year. Thank him for the year gone by. Because why should I give you another year if you didn't even thank him for what I just gave you? Okay? Thought. Yeah. I am your servant. Hashem, you are my master. You are my king. Great. What can you do? Nothing. <laughs> God wants to know what we can do. You have to know what you can do, what you're good at. That's advice. A good friend knows what you're good at. But a good friend also knows where you're weak. And he can tell you, this needs straightening out. Something's wrong. We have today one of our problems, maybe one of the reasons that we have black friends. Besides the fact that it's hard for us to invest in, in a relationship, it's hard for us to take uh, reproof. Even to straighten someone's feeling out. You know, and sure, you have to think about it ten times before you do it. People get insulted. It's all hard straight. And people don't like it. I'm doing it for you. <clears throat> it's a sensitivity. But a good friend, Yaakov Avino. Jacob came into Padan Aram, and he saw that the shepherds, it was the middle of the day, they gathered around, they're not working. And he wanted to tell them, too early to knock off work. But first, he said, Achan, my brothers, you have to establish a relationship with someone beforehand, before you can give them reproof, before you can correct them. And that includes your children. There has to be a big picture. If the big picture is a good one, so then we can talk about this. <coughs> So, a true friend is someone who you're able to hear and you're able to talk to. You acquire a good friend by caring about them, not about yourself. We have 10 minutes. Any questions? 12 minutes. No questions? Look, my first name is Rabbi. I can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I made up a word of evil. A man word is even Daberet, a speaking disease. Daberet. Dabran is a speak of Dabran is a word. Yeah? Yeah? Any questions? You know, you mentioned that the, the fourth way, the, the fourth kind of love, the one that's uh, yeah, I love you so much, so it's going to be reflected back on you. So, is that is that a love that, that is sustainable? Uh, you know. Okay, that's a good question. In other words, we said the fourth love, the love of the child, is I love you because I feel you love me. Is that sustainable? What that I think means is, does this person have to keep loving me in order for me to love them back? And eventually, if I just keep loving them, then will they notice? Oh, so here you have, it. in a car, you have a thing called a starter. A star tail. Yeah. <laughs> star tail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to achieve a certain connection, and then you can let go. Sometimes something, you know, it just has to catch. If it has to keep refilling constantly, just like a balloon has a hole in it. 
just have to keep rolling, then it's not good. But it's a good catalyst. And we should look. Yes? Is there maybe a fifth type of love? A fifth type of love. I'm, I'm hearing. I'm listening. Okay. Um, a love out of absolute appreciation for some what someone did, even if they're not doing it anymore. Okay. Excellent question. <coughs> On one hand, you could say that's part of loving someone because they're good. Because they did something good. Instead of they are good, They've but they done, did something good. Yeah. yeah? But it's very interesting. I was never asked that question. And my answer is yes. This is very important. I'm sure glad you spoke up. When a, a relationship that's contingent just on you keeping to do keeping on doing something is sometimes hard to sustain. <clears throat> but if I appreciate you for something you did once, then that that's that that's a preservative. Yeah. Hashem says to us. You followed me into the desert. I still remember that. And we're supposed to remember things that God did for us, or our parents did for us, or our friends did for us, or our spouse. Right? Well, who says they have to keep on replenishing it? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. I'm only gifted. What, what's the struggle we have in a good friend? Because you know you get you have friends from there and good friends here. That's you. <laughs> most people most people don't hold on to friends and it's hard for them to acquire friends. You you're a person in fact you can do it. But they're unusual. No, I mean I'm sorry, I mean I'm I'm sure. Okay. It's um yeah, it's 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 not a simple thing. Um, a lot of us, the the, the um, relationship is often just an emotional relationship. When the emotion is disconnected, which often means the person has moved away, so then it's harder to sustain. When the love is an intellectual love, then it doesn't matter. Because that's still that's still just as fresh. But you're right, some special people, the older they get, the more friends they have because they hold on to them. But you know, it's a different. Yeah. 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 Anything else? It's easier to hold on to old friends today with, with the internet. Okay, so you raise an interesting point. Today, it's easier to have access to someone through the internet and therefore maintain a friendship. That's true. And, and, and grandparents can have free long distance. And free long distance. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. I would just offer a disclaimer is that it's still not the same when 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 you uh, sit with someone. It's like there's a question in Halakha. I'm not saying any Halakha say you have a rabbi. Yeah? Is, is the mitzvah of Nichum Avelin to comfort the mourner? Can you do it on the phone? No. Okay, it's a question. But if we uh, often, but, many but say no. But, 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 but it's, it's a far yeah. away from it, you know, like a. But yeah. years ago, when you didn't have that ability to maintain contact, you were less likely to get on a plane and go see someone. There are friends who don't have to talk to each other, the friendship is still there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's unusual. It's unusual. But you're right. On a certain level, it's easy to maintain a relationship. In, in terms of comforting a mourner by phone, like I was a mourner for my father, and when people called me from far away, they comforted me. So that's why I would think that you can comfort a mourner by phone. Now, if the person lives in the same neighborhood and, and calls you, that's not so comforting. Yeah, let, let, let me get into a certain technical point. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the rabbi's presence. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I don't like his microphone. Baruch, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, I don't need his microphone. And if you would have given me a microphone, I would have pushed it on the side. Why? That's my favorite question, by the way. Why? Yeah. Because the, the, the um, Rav Shlomo Brev, they asked his Rebbe, Rav Chesko Levishin, why he gets less out of the recorded lectures than out of the live ones. I know who you are, I hear your words, what's the difference? So he said, the Chastel said to him, they have not yet learned how to record Neshama. <laughs> sound waves. So when I speak to you through a microphone, if you need a microphone, use it. But if not, a microphone is reconstituted to sound waves. That's why some people hold that the bracha that you make for the chatan v'kala should not be done with a microphone. There's a question, yeah? Some hold you can't use a microphone. Because it's really has to do with sound waves. So this is what I have to do with the nicham available on the phone. Of course, you could send someone a letter, yeah, and comfort them. Is that nicham available? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a mitzvah. It's a chesed. It's a mitzvah. Is it nicham available? Yeah? Nicham available, it seems that you have to be there to say something to them or be present. But... I'm not sure your, your rabbi will answer these questions. <laughs> if I have a question, I will ask him. What are you talking about? I said it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're fighting again. <laughs> yes. And David. That was, that's, the, that's the paradigm of the friendship. Because it wasn't conditioned at all. Because David was a threat to Jonathan's hegemony, for the passing on the, the dominion, the, the, uh, the kingship. And he loved him anyway. That's, we call it ahavash and the badava. It's a love that's not contingent on anything. That's a real love. I know something I love with people. I really do. Especially the Ahmas Atochim, he gave my son. It's a special place in the world. I am an ambassador of goodwill to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, two things quickly. So, so Rabbi Arlok, his kindness is, is it will be here for a little while longer. Those who'd like to come and speak, please keep your conversations short so that everyone can have a chance to, to take a, uh, spend a few moments with them. And the other thing is, don't forget, March 17th, it is our annual gala. We're honoring Bubby and Zeta Ray. Everyone, please come. If you cannot come, then please put a message in the ad journal this week. It has to be that things come with it.